it's a nice, brisk morning, and you're cruising along in your 2002. You would like some heat, but you notice you actually have cold air instead. You try to move the heater controls, but they're seized, and well, the fan doesn't blow either. Now you start to think, what are you doing with your life? Why don't you get something modern that works? Don't worry, this is classic car ownership at its finest. This simply means you need to rebuild the heater box. It's actually not that big of a deal. Here's how I did it on this 1976 BMW 2002. So, first step is to drain any coolant. Then, you will need to remove the center console. There's typically one screw under the storage platform, and one or two on either side into the bottom of the dash. Then, the hazard switch wiring to unplug, as well as any radio wiring. Now, hopefully, you won't have to deal with a 90s stereo install wiring job. Like this one. Since I had the transmission out already, it was easy for me to pull the center console back and out. Otherwise, you'll have to do some maneuvering around the gear shift lever and park brake lever. You might even have to remove a seat or at least move them all the way back. Make it a lot easier. So I didn't get a good clip of this, but after draining the coolant, there is two hoses in the engine bay that need to be removed. Now, the one is right behind the distributor cap, kind of in the firewall area. You can see the hose clamp and the valve right now. And then the other hose is just on the other side. To take out the heater box, you have to take out the glove box as well. There's three little seven mil screws at the back here. And they are just there. Now, if your car still has them, you'll need to remove the under dash panels. These are originally held by a few Phillips screws, although Mr. 90's stereo shop guy probably used anything and everything. Then the labeled heater control covers are next. Just a hook that fits in the slats, and they basically pop right out. There's two screws under the covers that hold each heater lever assembly. You'll need to take these out. Once the screws are removed, on the driver's side, you'll need to wiggle the levers and assembly carefully around the steering column. The passenger side can simply be pulled out and left hanging. And the heater hoses in behind can just be pulled off. Next, there is some wiring on the driver's side. This varies on the year of 02. These wires are for the lights and the fan motor. Then there is two 10 millimeter nuts holding the heater box itself. One of these nuts on the driver's side holds the ground as well. Then once you have the nuts off, it should just pull right out. And voila, one disgusting heater box. So this thing actually does work meaning the fan blows air and the heater controls work, but inside there's little foam paddles essentially, and I know all that foam is gonna be deteriorated. So yeah, still a little bit of coolant in there. Fun little bill. To take it apart, there's basically a few rivets on either side, those need to be drilled out, and then it comes half apart that's when you can do some more disconnecting. These things are always broken. <laughs> yeah, this one's cracked. A little silicone around it. Nice, oh, it looks like it might have been apart before actually. All right, well, let's dig in. Once it's out, it's time to split the box like an oyster. First, I remove the coolant valve. We'll put this aside for later. Seems all 2002 heater boxes are cracked in this area. Good thing you can get a rebuild kit for them. So all the rebuild parts, everything, the foam, the bushings, you'll see later, are from Bluntec. That hose is rock hard. Ooh, yeah. Now that it's split, we can dig in just a little more. There's three clips on the back that can be slid off with a pair of pliers. I find this method best if you were to try and pry them off with a screwdriver, you'd likely damage the plastics. 
Next, you have to undo the one heater cable. Then, it should come fully open. As you can see, there's not much left of the foam on the paddles. This is actually why you'll have air coming in even though you've switched it off. The bushings are completely toast as well. So the heater core has a little tag on it. I believe this means it was serviced at one point. It does seem like the heater core's been apart. So, once you take this little spring clamp off, I paint, paint a little red, paint a little red so you know which one's which, because I will be taking this all apart. Then this guy should just pull out. Nice. So it's a good idea to pressure test these if you aren't sure if it leaks or not. I daily drove this car and I know it doesn't leak, so we're good to go. So we have all the components laid out nicely in front of us. Let's see what the rebuild kit comes with. So the kit comes with all the foam, including the gasket between the heater core and the firewall. And it also comes with some gaskets and bushings, which is nice. So these two are for the heater core, and the rest of the little bushings are for the arms that move the flaps. Now is also the time to lubricate the cables. If they don't move freely, you want them to move as freely as possible. Nice. Also, it's a good idea to clean the boxes thoroughly as well. So we're going to be replacing these bushings. They're actually in pretty good shape. But we have new ones and it's a part. The other 2002 boxes that I've rebuilt, these have been like totally toast. But you have to pull these clips off, you have to be a little careful, but... Alright, you really don't have to be too careful removing these clips, as the kit does come with new ones. The next step is to remove this plate. It holds the flap pin, and it's just held in by two rivets. So, I'm using gun wash to clean the original foam off. It seems to be working all right. Good idea is to get these anodized or replated if they are rusty, just because the rust will make the new foam not stick so well. So, you can either blast them or paint them or whatever. Anodizing actually still, still looks pretty good on these. So, I think I can get away with just cleaning them and they'll be nice and original. So they are clean and ready for some foam. Look at the original anodizing. It's pretty vivid. Nope. Nice. I'm using a spray adhesive. It's the same stuff I used for my mini carpet like three years ago, and it's held up great. It's still rock solid, so I think it should be good for some foam. So yeah, basically you have to spray and let it sit for 15, 20 seconds. Let it get tacky. Now we have this side to do. So there's a foam stretch here that needs to be replaced. It's actually not too bad. It actually, it doesn't look too bad, but it just comes right off. It'll just fall off. So, and then these guys too, of course. So again, with this, you have to drill those two rivets out. Pop this guy off, and then it should come apart. You could probably even leave this one on, actually. But take these two little washers off, and drill those two rivets. Same thing, little plastic caps. It should just slide off. And then this should slide through here. Same the other side, the bushing on that side was actually totally gone. These might be reusable, this one's actually cracked, but they get a little worn out and the kit comes with new ones, so why not? And yeah, these bushings are like, they just fall apart. It's crazy. They don't look too bad and then they just crumble. All right, so the plastic is nice and clean. It is time to put these together. I actually did this wrong 
the <laughs> paddles go in the bracket first and then the whole assembly kind of goes in place. With rivets I always try to put the bigger side on the plastic end just to give me a bit of a chance. Nice. Now we have two working flaps. So just like the other side, I was very generous with the uh, cable lubricant. Just sprayed it down these and then moved the cables up and down. I think I got it in there pretty good. Like now is your chance. If the cables are stiff, now is definitely the opportunity to oil them and make sure they're not stiff. Because <laughs> these switches are actually supposed to move very nice and easily. So you can even add a little bit of oil or grease in here as well. The kit comes with new foam. Long pieces to wrap around like this. Got to kind of get the size you want, but something like that. Again, I put some spray foam on. And it should just slide in. Ooh. Now for a reassembly montage. So at this point we have new foam, new bushings, and everything's basically cleaned up. It's time to mate these two pieces again. These clips here that go on the bottom of the heater box, they actually have two little holes in them and you can use some like o-ring clamps. And then, ideally, if this goes well, you can slide them on. Very easy. Perfect. I find it best to slide them on as well instead of trying to go over top. That way you don't have to bend them out as much. So, the foam that we put around the heater core, you can see it here underneath, it's sealing up in between. And it's actually, there's a little bar here, so it's actually pressing against it and it's sealing up basically in the middle of the foam. So that worked out really nicely. Yeah, that worked out great. It's all sealed up. Next step, of course, is to tie this one to here, and that controls this flap. And then it's time for the top cover. Blech. Looks terrible, but the motor does work. So, we're just going to take it apart and clean it. There's a few clips holding it in, and... I do believe you can get new motors. I don't know the part number, but I'm pretty sure you can still get them new. So this actually, this thing worked before, so I think I'm just gonna clean it up. Perfect. Took the brushes off and cleaned the area with some super fine steel wool. Looks good. There's not really any play or anything. It actually looks quite good. So this motor did work, it was just filthy. And well, the brushes have lots of life in them, so I'm gonna put them back on. And hopefully, hopefully it should be good. Looks much better clean though. Nice. This basically just needs to be cleaned. Ooh, very nice. So, it's finally time to basically complete the heater box assembly and put this cover back on with the fan. So the fan's cleaned up. Seems to work nice. Clean the brushes and yeah, should work good, I'm hoping. So this just goes on, slides on like so. You have to remember to put this guy through this hole. 
And you also have to remember to plug these in. <laughs> Don't want to forget that. Otherwise, it's fairly straightforward. These little rubber gaskets go around here like they fit kind of in the hole, but they are, they're not fun. So I'll put the rubber gasket in here. I do that first. They just don't really work too well. We'll see how this comes along, but yeah. So here is an original seal for the heater core, and here is a new one. Now, they're actually quite different, and I suggest if your old ones are actually decent, maybe use them. But if not, cut a little section out, just like the other one. It'll make your life so much easier. Like so. I actually went back and cut basically these guys into little C's. I think that'll work better. All right, it's pretty straightforward. I just don't like the rubber gaskets, so I will end up using a little bit of silicone. And then before you fully tighten all the rivets, just plug it in and make sure it all works. Nice. That seems to be pretty solid, actually. So this is why you don't glue the foam on yet. Just gotta put these rivets in. Welcome back to David's super sophisticated heater box testing station. We have one heater box on top of a car battery. Very high-tech stuff. <laughs> but anyway, we have, this is your main control on this side. So this is your fan and your main heat. So now it is open and now it is closed. So this actually controls your heater valve as well. And then your other control, both closed now, but it's like for your defrost. These guys should go, but we're gonna test the fan. So even though they're fully closed, it should, there shouldn't be any air coming out of that. Nice. Speed work. Full speed. See this thing does. Woo. The motor works, everything seems to be functioning nice. So I pulled the rivets tight. It is basically ready to go in the car, except I have to do a little bit of foam here, and then glue a piece of foam here as well. And then of course, my heater valve then it'll be ready to go in the car. <laughs> this rubber is rock hard. But it was sealing, it wasn't leaking. Now for the valve. So quick disclaimer, I found out it did leak after the rebuild. It actually didn't leak before, so I probably shouldn't have touched it. If yours doesn't leak, I would kind of re recommend not, design. just don't touch it. Um, the rebuild kit seems to work, but it's not, uh, it's not the same. It doesn't seem the same quality either, but but yeah, here's what I did. I gave the valve just a light sandblasting, cleaned it up, and then new O-ring. Tried to put a little bit of silicone where the O-ring goes, and then put it together. It's actually, it's a very satisfying process. Somehow it does come together nice, and it's, it's a nice piece. The heater valve is rebuilt, and well, now it is time to install it. Unfortunately, the original 2002 plastic brackets are just not very good. They always seem to be broken, but you can get these repair panels. This just goes, pops in here, and then you can screw it in or drill and rivet it in place. And this should hold it actually quite sturdy. So these rivets actually should ideally be in the other way just to do this when it is apart, but we're going to see if this will work. And voila, heater box is transformed. It's amazing how some new foam and some cleaning can turn it into this from this.
Blech. That's disgusting. To think I was driving with this beast underneath my feet the whole time. The last step is to add this foam and then to mate it back into its home again. It's basically the same. Just remember to hold the 10 mils, put them in. Don't forget to tighten the ground on the driver's side and then if you can, put a battery in it and test it out.